Hello everyone and welcome to Meeple Madness Review. I am Taylor and on Meeple Madness Review I try to give you open and honest reviews about board games to see if they're good enough to fit on your table with your family and your game group. Today I'm going to be talking about dog fighting. That's right, that semi-legal practice of shooting at each other in the air. Well, what do you think I was talking about? I'm talking about Wings of War, World War II. This is the deluxe package that comes with four model airplanes that are really cool that you can play with. But Wings of War, World War II also has a variety of different games where you can substitute models for the actual cards. This base set is for two to four players and takes about half an hour to play. There is a lot of different expansions that come with this and additional rules. Also, you can get expansion planes so that it can play up to 20 some odd people. Yeah, over 20. So let's open up the box and see what's inside. Wings of War, World War II. First off, we do have a rule book. This rule book is very in depth and it is definitely a rule book. However, it does have very good illustrations, very good examples of what to do on your turn with all the different tokens, what they do. And it has a bunch of additional rules and scenarios that you can play. We have a bunch of tokens. These are additional tokens depending on special damage and special rules, including fuel counters, smoke damage, fire damage, all sorts of different things. Next we have tokens with arrows on them, black arrows and white arrows. Those arrows are going to tell everybody how fast your plane is going to go. Also, that will have an effect on whether or not you use fuel counters in the game. This deluxe set does come with a dashboard, a place where you can organize your cards for the game. You have two rounds of play, you're going to organize your moves two moves ahead. You're going to place this down, move one, move two. You're going to place the indicator on whether or not you're going at high speed or low speed. You have a place to put the rest of your deck, as well as places to keep track of fuel and special damage and all sorts of things. And there are four of those, one per each player. Next you have these guys. Okay, this is going to calculate damage, whether or not you can shoot somebody at long range or at short range. Next you have four different types of damage counters. There's an A, B, C, and a D. Okay, now these are just going to be regular tokens as far as components go. They're not bad, but these have different numbers on them of different types of damage that you can take, as well as special damage. Like that little guy there, that is your pilot gets shot. That is special damage, and so special rules apply the cards for each plane. Now you do have a card representing the plane itself, but you also have maneuverabilities. The white is low speed, the black is high speed. And so there are different maneuvers here and um, planes with A maneuverability are more maneuverable than players with lower numbers D, C, J, etc. Now with some of these, there are special maneuvers. Those are indicated by diamonds in the bottom corner, as well as the arrows. The arrows indicate what direction you are going. This one, the arrow is pointing up. That means you increase in elevation. And finally, in this deck, you have the plastic base for your plane. This gives you information on what damage your plane does when it's firing upon each other. The hit points, its maneuverability, and its firing arc. That is the angle up here as well as you have a arrow and a dash mark, that is gonna take place in maneuverability. Then you have a bunch of these guys. These are to indicate elevations. Next you have a special deck of cards. I sleeve all mine, so sorry about the reflection. Uh, these cards are going to, to depend. Some of them are bombing cards, since you do have the, those optional rules in there, those optional scenarios that you can play with. You do have AA guns as well. You have different facilities that you can bomb. It's, uh, this is just for special rules and scenarios. Then you have the actual models themselves. Now this is my favorite part. I am a big history buff. I study history in college as well as anthropology. And these are great representations of the different types of planes. And there is huge replayability here because there are additional planes that you can buy, each with their own maneuverability and each with their own different rates of fire. Okay, so here we have it set up one player versus the other player. We have the brave English Spitfire and we have the brave German Messerschmitt. Now this board is the table that you have itself. So you can increase the amount of table, decrease the amount of table, depending on how many planes you have. So this game does happen simultaneously. Everybody plans at the same time, everybody moves at the same time, and everyone fires at the same time. 
So each player is going to look through their different maneuver deck to determine where they want to move. Now, since the game is the table itself, maneuverability is kind of tricky. On each card, you have a dash. That is where the front of your plane is going to start. And then you have a arrow. That is where the back of your plane is going to finish. So if the person playing with the Spitfire is going to play this card at high speed, they line up the line with the front of the plane and they physically move the plane so that the arrow is over the arrow on the card, hold the platform steady, and get rid of the card. And now that plane has just moved. Now after they both pick what cards they're going to play, then they play one of these markers. Now on the back it will either be blank or it will have this kind of whooshy arrow thing, but on the front it has its indicator of whether or not it's high speed or low speed. So each player has a couple of different ones of these, both high speed and low speed, high speed being black, low speed being white, so that they can try to trick their opponent to try to keep it hidden about what speed they're going to go at. So then they move. The camel, or not the camel, this English player is moving at high speed in a straight line. And the Messerschmitt player, they are going at high speed as well, but they are not going in a straight line. So you line up the little hash mark, and you move it so that the arrow is on top of the arrow of the card, remove the card. Now, after one move, you check firing solutions. That's where this comes in. So you put the end of the stick at the center of the base, and you check your firing arc. So no one can fire on anyone else. You're still out of range. But that's going to change. Let's move number two. So then you check firing situations again. Now they are both at the same elevation of two. The English player cannot fire at the German. He is out of his firing arc. But the German can definitely fire on the Brit and it is well within his short range. Now, now that's when you look on the actual card or the platform itself to see how much damage is done. There we go. Now, the German fighter at short range, he does 1A damage and 2C damages. He, so he is a heavy hitter. So the English player grabs 1A damage token and 2C damage tokens without looking. Then he can turn, turn it over and see how much damage was actually done. So right there, the English plane took 8 points of damage. That is a huge hit, considering that the English plane has 17 hit points. And as soon as those hit points turn out, he explodes. And that's basically how you play the game. You move, you all plan your moves, you all move simultaneously, and then you all fire simultaneously. Last side flying is the winner. All right, so what is good and what is bad about Wings of War World War II and the deluxe set on top? Well, let's go down my meeples. Meeple number one, art. The artwork on this game is fantastic. The maneuverability card actually has scenery on the card itself, and it's different per deck. Some maneuvers are flying over water, some maneuvers are flying over land. Beautiful landscaping on the card, and that's a little detail type of thing. I am super impressed with the artwork that they did on the models. A lot of companies do not paint their models, such as Star Trek Fleet Captains. However, this game took the time to get the absolute detail of the artwork on the plane perfect. So as far as the artwork meeple, I'm awarding Wings of War World War II the whole meeple. Now let's move on to components. Now are these components going to last you a long time? Are they solid? And the answer is yes. The actual cardboard damage tokens are going to last you a long time. They are made of a good grade of cardboard. The models themselves are really nice. The fact that you have those in a deluxe game makes a huge difference just for the aesthetics and for moving things around. They are nice. So as far as the models go, if you are handling them fairly well, then they will last you a long time. There is one downside to the component, and that would be that the plastic platforms themselves the base of it is rounded, so it's harder to pick up the base, so you're inclined to pick up the plane, and that just messes things up. So on that note, I'm giving components for Wings of War World War II, three-fourths of a meeple. Now, the big thing, the gameplay, the one that costs two meeples. Is the gameplay fun, is it inventive, and is it going to be awesome? The answer is yes. 
This is a totally underrated game. The actual gameplay is very fun. You're blowing people out of the sky. However, this is a game where millimeters matter. And since there is no actual board, it's the table itself. If you bump a plane or if you move a plane, then that could affect the entire game. In fact, this became such an ingenuitive way of playing a game that Fantasy Flight bought the rights to Wings of War, sold off any remaining inventory, and they took the playstyle for their hit game. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody loved the playstyle. All they had to do was reskin it to fit a Star Wars theme, and people loved it. They went nuts for it. Well, this is the predecessor to that game. The game styles that are in there are also in here. Although I would submit that this is less complicated. So as far as gameplay goes, I'm awarding Wings of War World War II one and three quarters meeple. Now, let's move on to the it factor. The everything else, the, the price, the replayability, the oomph. Is it going to hold its own on your game shelf? So let's talk about price. Now this game was printed in 2009, and since Fantasy Flight really wanted their Star Wars X-Wings to really take off, they have discontinued the line. So as far as finding the deluxe set, the few copies that I could find online, these copies, went for around $100 each new and used. However, additional expansion planes, as well as the games that are just cards and not the model, you can find relatively inexpensive. And it is the same gameplay. You're just dealing with moving a card instead of moving a model. So as far as price goes, it's really up to you. If the cool models really matter, then getting the deluxe set is a bit spendy. However, if you just want the gameplay, then getting a, a paper card copy of the game, say Wings of War, Fire in the Sky, which is a different entry on BoardGameGeek.com, you can find a copy for $30, $40, and that's a pretty good deal. Now let's move on to replayability. This game does have high replayability, especially if you get more planes, because everyone's going to want to mix it up and see, okay, well, what is this plane? I want to try this plane out. There's also different missions that come in the rulebook so that you can try missions. The basic dogfighting is just a good way to introduce people to the game, but with all of the additional rules and nuances to it, this is a game that can be very involved and a game that you will want to bring to the table again and again. So as far as the everything else meeple, I'm awarding Wings of War World War II three quarters of a meeple. Overall, according to my meeple friends, Wings of War World War II has earned four and a quarter meeples. So overall, this is a solid game with a very unique mechanics and with additional rules to increase the in-depthness of the game. So if you enjoy pure military tactics in a game, if you enjoy moving things around on a table and being able to bust this out on any flat surface, then you might just enjoy Wings of War World War II. If you like that video, then go ahead and subscribe. There are videos like this coming out every single week about different board games out there to see whether or not this is a good match for your family and for your game group. Until next time, I am Taylor, and I'll see you at the game table.